Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. I'm at the NWFA Expo in St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm with Drew Hash, who's the vice president of Hardwood with Shaw Industries. Drew, how you doing? Hey, good afternoon, Kemp. Doing well. A little background on you. You came to Shaw as part of the ZigGraph acquisition, and how many years you've been at Shaw now? Uh, we've uh, been part of Shaw now eight years. So uh, we just did our annual report, and it'll be in the May issue. One of the things that I noticed when we were pulling it together is that Shaw's hardwood business has been growing a little faster than the market pace. What do you attribute that to? Well, I think a couple of things, Kim. First, we were real fortunate through the acquisition of Anderson nine years ago now. It's hard to believe it's been that long, but we're very fortunate to get some core assets from that. And one of those core assets was our style and design team. So I think from a pure style and design point of view, we've been able to always kind of stay somewhat ahead of the trends in the marketplace. The other side of our business that's really picked up is our access to the builder side of the business. And of course, Shaw, with the many years of relationships with the key, both subcontractors as well, the relationships back to the builders, we've been able to really leverage that in the hardwood category. All right, as we went through this recession, most everybody that follows the hardwood business knows that we got into trouble on the supply side. I mean, obviously hardwood is made out of a commodity called lumber, and we got into a situation where there were fewer sawmills, so pricing went up. Tell us what's going on with hardwood pricing now. Well, I think you're right. That kind of sets up where we've been because that was really one of the more challenging times in my career, and I've been in hardwood my whole career, and just to really see that inflation on raw material in just such a short amount of time, and then ultimately what that's meant in the marketplace from really a shift From even production builders that in my career I would have never dreamed that key production builders would, because of cost and price, look at other options. In particular, them looking at engineered, primarily because engineered is not nearly as volatile from a raw material perspective. I think as far as, you know, the climate today in raw materials, I think we've seen really about uh, middle of summer last year for the first time in many years we saw supply outpace demand start to see raw materials going the other way and that's what we're beginning to see on the lumber side now we've not seen that really on the veneer or log side at this point but we certainly are seeing it on the lumber side so, so that will affect solid wood pricing let me stress that you said solid wood pricing because engineered is such a manufactured product with all the different layers that it doesn't shift as much on lumber prices like solid does right that's right. Veneer and log prices, again, don't follow the same trends as, as lumber, correct? All right. So let's talk about distribution. Obviously, people know that with the Anderson acquisition, Shaw has both a direct method to market and also a through distribution method to market. What are the trends? What do you see happening there as far as the way wood gets to the end user? Well, we're fortunate, as you've already said, we inherited the best of the best as far as two-step distributors in the United States and Canada. And uh, we've continued to have those relationships and grow our business with all of them on the Anderson side of our business. And of course, I've already mentioned, we're fortunate from a Shaw perspective of having direct relationships uh, with, again, builders as well as the flooring contractors and been able to leverage that as well from that perspective. As Scott Sandlin, who I work for, likes to say, it's still a very regional business in hard surface. And again, we're very fortunate that we can participate in it either through our distributor side of our business or our direct model. You mentioned earlier about the builder market. Hopefully sometime this year that market's going to show up and give us a lot more energy. As that happens, are we going to see a shift over to unfinished? Because, you know, before the recession, we saw a lot of builders that liked to finish the wood once it was installed. Talk about that. If you think of it first, at the, the highest tier builders, Kemp, they'll continue, in my opinion, to still use unfinished, again, those more custom builders. But if, again, you start talking about the, the top production builders, uh, most of those have switched to some kind of pre-finished format. A lot of them first, as they evolved, went to pre-finished solids. And now, as I said earlier... We're continuing to see things evolve into pre-finished engineered products. And I think, as I mentioned, pricing volatility, the other reason that we really see this, if you look at just the style and design opportunities in engineered versus solid, clearly there are just so many more options in engineered. As we see the market, that's another thing that has really changed from engineered and why it continues to outpace solid from a category perspective. Now, these production builders, speed is very important to them, and that's actually created some issues that you've come up with some solutions for, right? Well, post-recession, what we've really noticed, a lot of changes, primarily in the concrete areas, but that's a lot of where the building growth is. So the Sunbelt states, where slabs are prevalent, 
what we noticed is that post-recession that there was a lot of energy from the corporate offices to turn houses faster. And one of the ways that, that changed in our mind and what we saw is just around concrete, the chemistry in concrete, how little they're letting it cure, and thus what we're asked to put our product on is much different than it was pre-recession. So we've been working behind the scenes. We really put together a state-of-the-art facility in Fountain End, South Carolina, and we built some things that really no one in the industry has ever done before, which is to really simulate a wet slab environment. So we kept proprietary, what we call pods that we've put together and really started trying to build something that we thought would perform much better in that harsh environment than, than what we have today. And when I say what we have today, we have traditional five-ply, ply core products, but we also have our Epic platform, and we really worked hard on that. And so we're going to be launching this spring two new names, one being Duras in our builder group and Epic Plus, which again is a proprietary product designed to uh, perform better in, in those really harsh conditions in new construction. All right, so as I said at the beginning of this, we're at the NWFA show. Uh, I know we're catching you kind of early on to the show, but what kind of product trends are we seeing out there? What are we seeing on the market that wasn't on the market a few years ago? Just had all of our key leadership and sales in, and what they consistently are hearing is wider and longer. And I think I haven't walked the show yet, but I have a good feeling that as I walk through the show, we'll see a lot of products that are wider and longer. We've worked real hard within Shaw to meet those trends. Sawn face, sliced face, where rotary was the standard rotary products, more sawn and sliced face products on the engineered side. Okay. Things tend to have a cycle from smooth to character. And so you're saying that it's still on the character side of the pendulum? I think it is really a, still a regional play. I think Texas, for example, in the southwest is going to still be that heavy rustic, heavy hand scraping, and we don't see any change to those trends. The northeast has always stayed a little more conservative. That's you know kind of the way it is. We've never, ever seen that area embrace the hand scrapes. Certainly it started in California, moved east, but it hadn't made it in our mind all the way to, the, to New England. But on the west coast, to your point, a little smoother, a little less texture, more wire brushing, and like I said, less scraping is certainly a trend we see. And we're seeing plenty of grays, aren't we? Amen. Grazy beige has been kind of the hot deal, absolutely. All right, one last question. I know you've spent some money recently at your South Pittsburgh wood plant. Talk a little bit about what you've been doing there. Well, again, it kind of ties to what I mentioned earlier about our new innovation around Duras and Epic Plus, but already it was the largest footprint and capacity of any facility in North America, and we're adding another 40% of capacity. It is amazing to see. Again, it's, it's state-of-the-art equipment, hopefully the lowest cost in the, in the industry as well. That's the idea around it, and uh, being able to service it right here in the U.S., to our customers faster of the highest quality. So it's an amazing facility, a lot of jobs that we were creating there in that South Pittsburgh, Tennessee area. All right, Drew, it's great to talk to you again. Been talking to Drew Hash, who's vice president of Hardwood with Shaw from the NWFA show in St. Louis, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloridaLe.net.